it's good to see everybody smiling. This is a great turnout. Must be mandatory. And I, was, <laughs> I was just there I this know, summer. Only black guy in the county. <laughs> As you can see, I always like to start off showing the background a little bit. That's me and my wife. It's a black and white photo. <laughs> uh, some of you still don't even get it. You're just going to uh, a black and white photo. Many times something that's routine or something we do on a regular basis, we can just, we just go and do it. In your field, many times people's lives are at stake. Wrong medication, wrong paperwork. But because you've done it a million times, you go on autopilot. Autopilot is only for airplanes, friends. Not for us as we think day in and day out. The pilot this afternoon, when I get on the airplane head to Washington, D.C., I don't want him to be multitasking. I don't want her. Oh, I guess we're getting ready to land this thing. No, that's not good. Our world has become so fast that we sacrifice human relationships in the process. Many times our lives are littered with casualties of friendships and relationships because we never slow down to listen. People don't do that anymore. People don't just say, hey, how you doing? You know what they do? Hey, how you doing? They just keep going. We don't even stop to say how, you know, to get the answer anymore. Slow down, friends, and listen. I really enjoyed Aaron's presentation today. The thing about Aaron Davis is when he speaks, he brings his passion, he brings his real life experiences, and the best part is I can take it and apply it to my own life. Um, he does things in such a way that makes it a humorous look to something that's very serious, and yet at the same time, it, it kind of hits your core, it hits you in the heart. Remember that the customer's not always right, but they can always be educated. We can always educate the customers when product services, bylaws and protocol takes place for that product or service. We can always educate them. If we are not proactive in all, across all industries right now, the competition is waiting to get them. You see, every time a customer is disappointed or upset, is it either a chance for us to reinforce those ties or to loosen them? <laughs> Remember the floppy disk? Remember you had about 80,000 of these suckers hanging out in your office? Huh? Floppy disk! And we thought we were up, I mean, we were high tech! Hold on, I'll just put my disk right in there, you know? <laughs> if you're still walking around one of these, we need to talk. <laughs> Remember the first cell phone that came out? How are you going to change the lives of the people who work for you and team up with you? And I hate when people call it a staff. I hate that term. It's like a staff infection. <laughs> no, they're teammates. And you know what the truth of the matter is? Many of those people on your team, you spend more time with them than you do your own families. When he gets involved with what he does, he gives 110%. He talked about being a champion today, and to me, he exhibits that every day of his life. What are you going to have to do to differentiate yourself between the other banks and other institutions that are out there? What's going to make them remember you? Now, Terry is never going to forget coming up on the stage in Palm Springs and getting 100 bucks simply for walking maybe 40 yards. Easy 100 bucks! A lot tougher in the marketplace, though. How are you going to stand out? How will you be different? You have to be willing to take a risk, even when maybe other institutions aren't doing it, when you don't understand your customer service perhaps, but you have to be willing to take a risk and not worry about what other people are thinking. Because many of you were there, it's like, well, I should go, but I don't know what he's going to say, what she's going to say. I don't feel comfortable. I don't know what's going to happen. That's business, as we all know. It's taking a major risk. But the rewards can be nice. Am I right, Terry? And as a huge buddy walks just like this, guy walks around, <laughs> and it's kind of like that. Damn, I want you to play my left, my guard, all right? You go to my guard, and at snap of the ball, I want you to show us your mean face. And I want you to just go, bam! Then I want you to do the snake like that, okay? You don't have to do that, no! <laughs> Are you ready to play? Oh, yeah. Okay. My running back has painted nails, okay. <laughs> Your right hand's gonna be here, left hand here. Okay, you're not catching a watermelon. It's just like this. Just like, I'm ready to catch. I'm ready, right here, right here. Give it to me. <laughs> how often do you tell your left tackles how much you appreciate them? Those people who cover your backside, those people who help you run your facility, your office, your division, whatever it may be, how often do you tell them thank you? Think about that. Why do we wait until tragedy once again to tell people how much we appreciate them? Don't just say good job. Tell them what job they did that was good. Be specific about it. 
The quote I have at the bottom there is by General Eric Shinsky, the Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army. He says, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance even less. Some people, have you, have you heard this before? Well, we've always done it this way. If you're not changing, you're getting left behind. Because good doesn't cut it anymore. You don't want a good deal. You want an amazing deal with great service. So because of the quantity of banks, there are things that you must do better than anybody else. Ladies and gents, it's your people. It's not your product. It's not your service. And until we begin to develop an emotional bond with our people and give consumers and clients and the people who utilize your service or association and we give them an emotional experience, if you can tie into the emotions of your people, it's a phenomenal thing. It's an amazing thing. Think about that, how the ball gets dropped and everybody's pointing a finger. You know who's willing to pick the ball up? In fact, just a perfect example. You know what the competitors will do? They will find it. And they'll say, hey, what happened? <laughs> they weren't taking care of you over there? Let us talk to you. When you drop the ball, there's a line of people waiting to pick it up. And they shower them with all of the simple service they wanted from you. But you know what we tend to get when we have long-term clients? We tend to get lazy. The first one I have on there, I just called. Remember that song by who's uh, uh, Stevie Wonder? I just called. Remember what was it? Sing the rest. There you go. That a girl. She was getting it. But what you can do is just call people and say thank you. I don't want anything. We're going to offer another service or product just to call you to say thank you. Selling Power Magazine said that 85% of those people were the consumers were not satisfied with the people who sold them their products. Whether it's a banking institution, whether it was a Walmart, whether it was a store, regardless of what it was, they said they didn't feel that they were listened to. Isn't that amazing? Ladies and gentlemen, imagine what your institution would look like if you said we're going to listen to our client, to our customer base, like nothing else. Listening is crucial. I really enjoyed today's program. Um, Aaron was very motivational. Um, he also brought things um, that you look at every day in a way that um, you can motivate yourself. I would definitely encourage um, you to have Aaron come to your organization to speak about um, teamwork because there's so many things that your employees can receive at so many different levels um, that they can apply to their job. I want you, each one of you in here to identify the top two or three things that you could do. What are your high payoff activities? What are those two or three things that you should be doing in some shape or form every single day? How many of you have missions for your, for your facility? Mission statements. How many of you know it by heart? Whoa. <laughs> Got one, two. Check this out though. Here's the problem I have with mission statements that are so long, you're not gonna remember it. Ladies and gents, mission statements aren't just because they look good. Champions understand it's the mission is the very reason why they exist. My only advice is this, if you don't know the mission statement, if the people don't know it, why do you have one? I met my wife my freshman year at the University of Nebraska. Her father is a farmer. She wanted me to take me home to meet her parents. Not many black farmers in the state of Nebraska. <laughs> to my knowledge, there's none. It's amazing. I'm telling you, it's unreal. As I'm getting out of the car, two little boys are just looking at me like this. And I'm looking back at them and they're looking at me. And as I'm going in the store and I'm coming back out, one starts riding his bike for us, the other one's running. And then they start, we start riding faster, he starts running faster. And then they started yelling something. And I looked, they said, Michael Jordan! That's Michael Jordan! Oh, and they're running as fast and I'm looking, where? Where's Michael Jordan at? And they're looking at me! I thought the presentation was wonderful. It was funny, it was thought-provoking, not only my personal life, but my professional life, going back to the office and uh, acknowledging people around me and those that help me do my job. Actually, this is the second time that I've seen Aaron. I saw him last fall at a training, and this was my month to plan an event, and I'm like, I already know who I'm getting. I called Aaron, and he agreed to do it. It was awesome. We loved it.